What do you need to know to pass the second subtest of the CSET multiple subjects test? My name is Scott Roselle, founder of 240 Tutoring, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you have to know to pass the test. This video is gonna focus specifically on the mathematical concepts you have to know to pass the subtest two of the CSET multiple subjects. We're gonna go through the concepts you have to know and how they might show up on the test. So how do I know what's on the test? Well, as a founder of 240 Tutoring, I have studied this test to make sure that we offer the best study guide possible. And as I've studied the test, I found the concepts that are most likely to be on the test, and I wanna let you in on the secrets that I've unlocked for the multiple subjects. So keep watching, and please go ahead, like the video, subscribe to our channel. It helps us create more videos just like this, more incredibly helpful videos for teachers like you. Now, the math questions on the CSET can be the most intimidating for test takers because they feel like they have to know all these advanced formulas, and they have to know all these advanced mathematical concepts that they haven't done since high school. The good news is that the math concepts on the multiple subjects are pretty elementary. And so if you know what to expect and do a little bit of studying, you can be prepared and do just fine. Now the math questions can be easily divided into four areas, number sense, algebra and functions, measurement and geometry, and probability and statistics. Number sense questions are really gonna focus on how well you understand the base 10 value system, the greatest common factor, the prime factors, which are super important, as well as ordering real numbers like integers, mixed numbers, and real numbers on a number line. Also on number sense, you're gonna to have to know how to write in the scientific notation, as well as perform operations with whole, fractional, and even negative exponents. The big concept to know with number sense is the order of operations, or P-E-M-D-A-S, PEMDAS. You see, the order of operations impacts how you solve for and simplify an equation. So if you have an equation like two parentheses x minus three plus three parentheses x plus four squared, you have to work the problem according to a specific order, and that specific order is outlined in the order of operations. Now, algebra concepts are gonna be a little bit different. They're gonna focus on things like how to identify numerical patterns. So you need to be familiar with functions, tables, and graphs. That means you need to be able to identify patterns and create functions that outline or predict the pattern of the number sequence. And understanding proportional reasoning will go a long way with understanding and identifying numerical patterns. Proportional reasoning can really deal with things like ratios, equivalent fractions, similar triangles, and other things like that. The algebra section is also going to focus on expressions for equalities and inequalities. And no, we're not talking about the inequalities you hear about on the cable news networks. You also need to know how equations can be different, but the same. So 2 parentheses x minus 6 equals 2x minus 12. The equations are different, but they equal and really are the same equation. In algebra, you're gonna need to know the basic equation y equals mx plus b and how to translate that equation onto a coordinate plane or a graph. And finally, you need to make sure you know what basic exponential equations look like on a graph. Now the big concept to know is the meaning and connection between symbolic expressions. And that really means how to take an equation and apply it to a real life example, or how to take a real life math problem and create an equation for it. Geometry questions are really gonna focus on shapes, their symmetry, how they translate, rotate, reflect. They're gonna deal with triangles like right triangles and isosceles triangles. I mean, it's geometry you're gonna to have to know the basic definitions of shapes. Now what I mean by definition is, how many sides does a triangle have? How many sides does a square have? How many sides does a hexagon have? And what is the sum of the interior angles of each shape? You should also know how shapes are reflected, translated, or rotated across a geometric plane. Now the big thing you really need to know for geometry is the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And if you don't know what it is, look in the description below. We're gonna have a link. You need to know what the Pythagorean Theorem is. If you're with us so far, you're doing great. We have one more section to cover, but go ahead, subscribe, like the video, make a comment. Let us know how we're doing and if you're finding the video useful. Now, the probability and statistics questions are gonna look at calculating things like mean, median, mode, and range of a data set. And for probability and statistics, you're gonna need to know how to express probability in different ways, such as using ratios, proportions, decimals, and even percentages while assessing the probability of outcomes in terms of a defined sample. To prepare for the probability and statistics questions, make sure you know exactly how to assess the probability of a specific outcome 
in a given situation, like the roll of a dice, or the probability of drawing a red marble of a bag that has five red marbles, five green marbles, and five blue marbles. It's questions like that that will appear on the multiple subjects and you will have to calculate to get the correct answer. And that's really the big concept for probability and statistics, how to calculate the probability of an event given certain parameters, such as there's five red marbles, five green marbles, and five blue marbles in a bag, What's the probability of drawing a red marble and then a green marble? How do you figure that question out? That exact problem has appeared on past probability and statistics questions, and it's likely to appear, or some variation of the problem, in your test form. Now, if you have any questions about the test, leave a comment below. If you have any thoughts about the video, leave a comment below. Let us know how we're doing, what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us keep creating videos for teachers just like you so they can pass their test and get in, into the classroom.